Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we're going to discuss this article regarding the um, identity of these uh, ancient Britons that they found west Sussex at the Boxgrove site. About, I think 1994 is when these were unearthed. And what they found was a leg bone and teeth, which was dated to about 480,000 years ago. So here's a, a pretty pretty good map here. Um, you can see it's like right southwest of uh, London, right next to the English Channel. What they highly suspect is that these ancient men and women were hunting deer, horses, and possibly rhinos. They had sophisticated stone tools, but they're still not sure where to place them or classify them, either as Heidelbergensis or what's now being termed as early Neanderthals, prob- possibly from Eurasia. And then after that, um, Homo sapiens take over, and then after they disappear from the fossil record. So this study is being linked to the Cima de los Huesos site. I'll link to the video that I did a while ago about that. In a nutshell, it's a site that is rich in remnants of these, quote, early Neanderthals I was telling you about in northern Spain. Um, Northern Spain, pretty close coincidentally to uh, the Basque country. Yeah, this is like right around the Basque country. But yeah, what they found was a pit of bones here, and these fossils were dated to about 430,000 years ago, which is younger than the site at uh, Boxgrove. It's a great reference point in the sense that it's data-rich because there have been 30 individuals unearthed from the sediments about 50 uh, feet deep in this pit. It's full of people who were probably murdered. They were deliberately killed. The significant number of of them had skull injuries. They were well preserved. They were complete skulls and their backbones. It's used, uh, you know, rightly so, as a reference point to cross examine other discoveries, especially if they're trying to figure out exactly what type of human it was, such as this box, box grove guy. And th- these are the, some of the skulls that they found at Cima de los Hueso site. You can see, like, there's a ton of these photos. You can just do a quick search, and you'll find a ton of these uh, skulls. And you can see, like, they have these head injuries here. They compared the teeth to uh, from these. I think we're right here. Yeah. So there's a picture of the teeth here. They were exa- uh, cross-examined with uh, the box grove teeth, which I don't have a picture of. But this is the tibia that they uh, used to compare with the other ones at the at the site in Spain. And this shin bone is completely different from the one in uh, Spain so this one is a lot more robust and the shape is different Uh, so that throws a huge monkey wrench into any type of consensus that there would be on of what this thing is what this individual was and even if if they were similar similar it still doesn't deny that the link between the teeth like the two teeth are very similar or almost identical so just by virtue of that there is some type of connection as far as the sea level is concerned, I'm, I don't have a map of the sea level. Maybe someone in the comments might have one. I don't have one on uh, handy. Around half a million years ago, it would make sense if it was they were considerably lower than they are now. I mean, right now, they're, it's unprecedentedly high. It's about like 140, 150 meters higher than it was uh, since the last basically 30,000 years. But we're talking half a million years, so I'm not sure. But I, I think it would be safe to assume that if these two individuals were indeed somehow related, a thousand kilometers is pretty far, especially in those days. But um, you never know. Another interesting thing that uh, the article mentioned was that these were probably f- uh, these individuals in uh, Spain were likely from Eurasia. As you guys probably know, there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of um, connections that you could kind of tangent off to more further exploration in terms of uh, an ancient connection between these two areas. Uh, But even in more recent history, these uh, areas are very intertwined. So um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. I thought it was really interesting. I thought it's uh, it's good to uh, get some some traction going in terms of really sussing this out and trying to reconcile all these different point of views was it just one type of Neanderthal? How many different types of Neanderthals? Should we even call them Neanderthals? Were they complete, something completely different? When exactly were they living with each other? Or were they coexisting? Were they just replacing each other? There's so much 
to pin down here. It's when stuff like this happens, and thank goodness for for the Spanish site because um, it, it, it's a great way to kind of set the bar as to uh, starting to classify more and more of these skulls that are coming in into very defined boxes, just to help our understanding in the future. Because you know we this has to be laid down brick by brick if we're trying to build a a whole new um, history that makes actual sense and is uh, data driven and, and based on evidence. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, if you guys have that map, that would be really cool.